The blessed autumn feast, the Feast of Trumpets has come. I hope you will receive much blessing through the feasts. Today, by keeping the Feast of Trumpets, I hope all the members of Zion around the world will come to achieve full repentance before God. And while doing so, receive salvation and enter the kingdom of heaven. Regarding this, let us share the Word of God today with the sermon title, The Feast of Trumpets and Repentance. First, let's take a look at the book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 24. Say to the Israelites, On the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly commemorated with trumpet blasts. Today is the first day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. It is said this day was to be commemorated with trumpet blasts. Let us see the origin of the Feast of Trumpets. When Moses came down with the first set of Ten Commandments, he found the Israelites worshipping a golden calf. By seeing the Israelites worshipping the idol, Moses threw the tablets down on the mountain, breaking them into pieces. He was furious. That's why 3,000 people were put to death that day. After that, those who remained came back to their senses by realizing that they had sinned against God. And they earnestly repented by confessing all their wrongdoing. Then, God commanded Moses to come up Mount Sinai and receive a second set of the Ten Commandments on the first day of the sixth month by the sacred calendar. So, he went up Mount Sinai on the first day of the sixth month and fasted again for 40 days. Moses fasted 40 days when he received the first set of the Ten Commandments. And he fasted another 40 days when he received the second set. After fasting 40 days, he received the Ten Commandments and came down. That day was the tenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar. On the tenth day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar, God atoned for all the sins of the Israelites. Therefore, God appointed the tenth day of the seventh month as the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement comes ten days from now. So prepare with repentant hearts. God always made His people blow the trumpets for ten days before the Day of Atonement and let them repent of all their sins they had committed for the past year and confess them before God. Today, the first day of the seventh month by the sacred calendar is the feast God established with this purpose. The meaning contained in the Feast of Trumpets is repentance. Two thousand years ago, Jesus came to the earth and said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. It is imperative for us to understand that there is an inseparable relationship between the kingdom of heaven and repentance. Repent. Simply put, unless we repent, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Doesn't this mean that we can enter the kingdom of heaven only after we repent? Many people say, I haven't done anything wrong in my lifetime. Then, what is there to repent of? Unless they understand the spiritual world, they can never understand why repentance is needed to enter the kingdom of heaven. The Bible states that all of us were angels in heaven before coming down to the earth in human form. What happened in heaven? 
we committed treason against God. We were cast down to the earth after committing sin in heaven and are now living in human form. Doesn't the Bible say that we were originally God's children as angels in heaven? The answer to the question of how to return to the kingdom of heaven is repentance. We have to repent for the sins we've committed on the earth. However, we must definitely be sure to repent for the sins we committed in heaven. Some people may ask, why should I repent? I've done nothing wrong. Let us look at the book of 1 John, chapter 1, verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar and His Word has no place in our lives. We are the angels who have been expelled to the earth because of our sins committed in heaven. The fact that we were born on this earth proves that we are sinners because no one other than sinners can put on the flesh. We came down to the earth putting on the flesh because of our sin. Didn't God grant a limited lifespan to all mankind so that they could live a life of repentance on the earth? As it is written in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar and His word has no place in our lives. Since God knows everything we have done in heaven and on earth, isn't that why He wants us to repent quickly and come back to the kingdom of heaven? That is why the Bible says, if we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar and His word has no place in our lives. This feast, which starts from the Feast of Trumpets until the Day of Atonement, is the feast that God expects our repentance. No matter what, for the sins we committed in heaven and on earth, whether we remember them or not, let us completely repent and confess all our sins before God and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. Now, let us look at some testimonies about repentance from the prophets. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore, O house of Israel, I will judge you, each one according to his ways, declares the Sovereign Lord. What must we do? Repent. Turn away from all your offenses. Then, sin will not be your downfall. Rid yourselves of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I take no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent. And do what after repenting? And live. Here, the Bible and the prophets testify that those who do not repent will die. But the way to live will be open for those who repent. In verse 30, it says, Turn away from all your offenses. 
no matter what, we must turn away from all our sins, whether committed on earth or in heaven. Didn't God come to the earth to turn us away from sin? Let us see another warning about repentance in the book of Psalms. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 7, verse 12. If he does not relent, meaning if he does not repent, he will sharpen his sword, he will bend and string his bow, he has prepared his deadly weapons, he makes ready his flaming arrows, he who is pregnant with evil and conceives trouble gives birth to disillusionment. It is written in verse 12, if a man does not repent, what will God do? He will sharpen his sword. If a man does not repent, God bends and strings his bow to get it ready. When we put it simply, doesn't this mean, if a man does not repent, only destruction and death is waiting for him? Then, what sin did we commit and how can we repent of it? First, we need to find the origin of our sin which started in heaven. In Isaiah chapter 14, God gives us insight into the mental state of the first criminal in the celestial world. Through this, let us take the time to understand our own state of mind, which resulted in us being expelled. And think, why did God give us all the regulations, decrees, and laws of the new covenant? Let's see chapter 14, verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the Mount of Assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. The Most High is God. But the morning star rebelled against God, saying, I will make myself like God. In verse 15 it says, But you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit, those who see you stare at you, they ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble? The man who made the world a desert, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home? All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your tomb like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword those who descend to the stones of the pit. Like a corpse trampled underfoot, you will not join them in burial. For you have destroyed your land and killed your people. The offspring of the wicked will never be mentioned again. Here, God explains the previous life of the king of Babylon. He tried to raise his throne above God. How deplorable! What did this sin bring about in the end? As it is written in Revelation, what took place in heaven? There was war in heaven. Satan, who is likened to the dragon, was hurled down to the earth with his angels. They committed the grievous sin of attempting to take the throne of God. Let us find one more verse in Ezekiel chapter 28. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 11. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, This is what the sovereign Lord says, You are the model of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone adorned you. Ruby, topaz, and emerald, chrysolite, 
onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and beryl. Your settings and mountings were made of gold. On the day you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till wickedness was found in you. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before kings. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out from you, and it consumed you. And I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who are watching. Ezekiel chapter 28 explains the previous life of the king of Tyre. In his previous life, the king of Tyre was a guardian cherub. But because he was proud, he became violent and finally sinned against God. The reason God showed the examples of the king of Babylon and the king of Tyre was to remind us of the life we lived before this life. And the reason we came to this earth from the angelic world after committing sins against God. Therefore, what did Jesus say was the reason He came to the earth? He said, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Where did sinners commit sin? They sinned in heaven. Didn't Jesus come to the earth to lead sinners to repentance and to save them? Let's look at Luke chapter 5, verse 31. Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous. The reason Jesus came to the earth was not to call the righteous, but whom? But sinners to repentance. He came to the earth to lead them to repentance. In the book of 1 John, it says, if we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar. We are sinners who committed grievous sins in heaven and were cast down to the earth. In order to lead these corrupt souls to salvation and lead them to repentance, Jesus came to the earth. That is why early in his ministry he said, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. In other words, if you want to return to heaven, you must first repent of all the sins you committed in heaven and complete the work of repentance. Didn't Jesus teach us this? Then, how can we be forgiven for all our sins? Forgiveness of sins is the most important thing for mankind. First, let us learn more about what sin is. Let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, what is sin? Sin is lawlessness. Just as there are laws on the earth, there are laws in heaven. After being tempted by Satan, the devil, who broke the laws of heaven and who disturbed the order of the universe, mankind tried to overthrow the throne of God and as a result were driven to this world. The main reason for all this originated from a heart that did not respect God-appointed laws, regulations, and decrees. So, what does the Bible say about sin? Everyone who sins breaks what? Everyone who sins breaks the law. 
and sin is lawlessness. Let's continue with verse 5. But you know that He appeared so that He might take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. Verse 6. No one who lives in Him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen Him or known Him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of whom? Whoever sins and does evil is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. The Bible teaches us that those who do not accept God's laws, regulations, and decrees, and those who do not live their lives according to God's commands, are those deceived by Satan and are forced to live their lives according to Satan's will. Therefore, what has God always emphasized even after coming to the earth? When He came to the earth to save mankind, He always taught us, obey the laws, regulations, and decrees. Saying this, He continues to remind all mankind. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised on oath to your forefathers. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. God let the Israelites walk the path of the desert for 40 years to see whether or not they would obey God's commands. Didn't God let the Israelites spend 40 years in the desert until He could confirm it? It's because God-given laws, regulations, and decrees are that important. Now we are walking the path of faith in the spiritual wilderness. Walking the path of faith, we should unite graciously when God says, unite with one another, and lower ourselves when we are told, lower yourselves and humble ourselves when He says, humble yourselves. No matter what God says, we should obey God's words and commands. Only then won't we be able to regain the eternal kingdom of heaven. That's why Jesus gave us a very important lesson when teaching us how to repent. Let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 15. The time has come, He said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and, what should you do? Believe the good news. Believing the gospel, obeying the gospel, and carrying out the gospel work is the one and only way to repent for the sins we committed against God in heaven and were expelled to this earth for. As you have learned in the truth, what is the gospel? Doesn't the truth of the new covenant contain all the various laws, regulations, and decrees of God that repentant people need to follow? That is why it is said that those who repent must believe the gospel. Those who do not believe the new covenant can never believe the gospel. Isn't it also true that those who do not believe the gospel can never accomplish complete repentance? What does the New Covenant contain that we are required to believe the New Covenant Gospel? Let's find the answer in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22. In Luke, chapter 22, verse 7, it is written, Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Let us move on to verse 19 and see the scene of the Passover. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Here we can see the death and sacrifice of Jesus Christ are contained in the new covenant. The new covenant is the gospel. Without the blood of Christ, we cannot return to the eternal kingdom of heaven. After hearing that they can enter heaven by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, some people ask, isn't keeping the Passover enough? We must understand the real meaning of the Passover. Through what was the new covenant established? Didn't Jesus say, this is the new covenant in my blood? In this new covenant is the sacrifice of God, our spiritual parents. Because of my sins, who was sacrificed and killed? We, God's children, must realize this and keep it in mind. In order to ensure that such things will never happen, shouldn't we live our lives far away from sin? Since we have been forgiven of our sins, let us never be involved in any sin again. To help us understand all of this, God established many laws. In the Old Testament, there were offerings for Sabbath, regular offerings, offerings for feasts, and sin offerings for the people. Whenever an animal was sacrificed, it was always because someone sinned. On behalf of a person's sin, an animal was killed. The question is, who died for our sin? When we understand who bore the pain and suffering of death instead of us, we can sincerely repent of all our sins. We must clearly understand what message the truth of the new covenant is trying to convey to us. God's severe suffering and death on the cross shows us just a fraction of His sacrifice. We, God's children, should fully understand how much suffering is contained in it. And we must never again be involved in any sin so that we can enter heaven through this gracious autumn feast. This concludes today's sermon. Thank you very much.